Hey there, subscribe to my channel, and also press this bell icon so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. You will hear a conversation between a university counsellor and two students, Joseph and Kara. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi Joseph, how are you today? Fine, thanks. And Kara, how are you? Good. As we discussed on the phone earlier, I wanted to speak with both of you about the subjects you have chosen to study and how you are managing your time, OK? Yes. I think so. OK, so I'll start with Kara. You've been here for how many months now? I've been here for six months. How are you finding it? It's good. I'm enjoying the course. And what about life outside? Are you making friends and socialising? Not really. People here are quite closed. They don't talk to you. I see. So what do you do after classes? I usually go home and study, and I might go out for a walk, but never really with anyone. Sometimes my roommate Louisa comes with me, but she always seems to be busy. How is this affecting your schoolwork? I don't think it is, but I miss home. Kara, what I suggest for now is that you look into joining one of the social clubs on campus. There are a variety of them. You can go camping, skiing, snorkeling, painting, dancing, reading, horse riding, rowing. There's a list on the school website. Have a look and work out which one you're interested in and which suits your timetable. You'll meet friends that way and people who have the same career interests as you. As for the subjects you've chosen for a career in microbiology, I think you should look into dropping one of your subjects and picking it up again next year as a minor. You have a lot on your plate, and this will just cause great pressure. It doesn't mean that you aren't coping, but you're doing about 10 hours more than the average student a week. Think about it, and we can make another appointment to discuss it. When are you free? I have an hour free usually on Wednesdays at 11.30. OK, good. Come to my office at 11.45 and wait in reception, OK? OK. I'll see you then. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Joseph, how are you finding the university? I love it. It's very different from home. Life here is very much focused on study and also socialising through sport. People have been very friendly and curious about my culture. So, you've managed to integrate well? I think so. I've joined the rugby team, something I'd never thought I'd be interested in. And how are your studies going? I think I am doing well. I have a few assignments that need some work, but overall I'm coping. That's good. I'm happy that you're enjoying the university, but remember, don't let your schoolwork get too far behind, because it will pile up and before you know it, you will be late handing in work. You know that there's a penalty for handing in work late? No, I didn't. You would have been told at the start of the course, during orientation. I don't remember. You need to remember these things. They are very important. You might be an excellent student, but if you consistently hand in work late, you'll be penalised and you might end up losing your degree over it. That's a lot of years of work. 
okay? Yes, I'll remember that. <laughs> and also remember that you have to attend 90% of your classes. So far, you have missed five tutorials. Be careful here. These could also cost you your degree. Is there any particular reason you missed these classes? I'd been training for our rugby match the night before and, well, we went out afterwards and I slept past my alarm clock. Joseph, I know this culture must be very different from where you come from, but please try and be a little more conservative with your time. I think maybe you should spend more time on your studies and less time on socialising. The subjects you've chosen are intensive. I want you to spend three hours a night studying before you decide to do anything else. I'll make an appointment to see you in a month and we can assess your progress. I'll give you my business card. All my contact details are there. Call me in three weeks to organise another meeting. Do you have any questions for me? No, none. OK, I'll see you in a month. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a flight attendant talking to passengers on an airplane. First, you will have time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all slept soundly overnight. I'm pleased to confirm that our flight is running on schedule and we expect to arrive in Christchurch at 8 a.m. local time. That's about 50 minutes from now. I've been advised by our pilot to warn you that there may be some turbulence on our descent. So please remain seated and have your seatbelt on at all times. As you may have heard, a fairly severe tropical depression is headed for New Zealand and in fact is reaching the west coast of the South Island as we speak. Thankfully, we are landing on the east coast, where the weather is still relatively good. Wind speeds are steady at around 15 miles per hour and the sky is generally overcast, though the sun may creep out from time to time as the morning progresses. That said, when the storm reaches this afternoon, conditions will deteriorate rather quickly. Please exercise extreme caution if you're traveling anywhere on the island today. As I said, the storm has already made landfall on the west, northwest coast and we're getting reports of high seas and very strong winds of around 75 miles per hour with gusts up to 110 in Collingwood. Heavy and thundery rainfall is also being reported there. The Southern Alps are experiencing severe blizzard conditions and there is a virtual whiteout on the roads. There are accumulations of up to three foot of snow already, so please, under no circumstances, be tempted to take the mountain road from Christchurch to Bluff. Use the coastal route for the entire journey if you must go down south. Over in the west, in Hokitika, and the southwest, in Milford, conditions are bad with heavy rain, high winds, and high seas. In fact, several tornadoes were reported in Hokkitika and also in Lewis, which is slightly further inland. Also inland, on the northern edge of the Southern Alps, Arthur's Pass should be avoided at all costs. Roads are closed due to the heavy snowfall. Kaikoura has reported wind speeds of 45 miles per hour, with occasional gusts a bit stronger. 
but so far it has escaped the heavy rain. At present, it is windy and cloudy there. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. We should be landing in approximately 10 minutes' time. Just an update for you on the weather conditions in and around Christchurch. We expect the storm to reach us by approximately 1 p.m. Town officials are closing all roads out of town as conditions are simply going to be too dangerous with the risk of falling trees and flying debris too high. Roads will have officially been closed for 30 minutes by the time we land at 8 a.m. Passengers whose travel plans did not entail an overnight stay in Christchurch, we would like to extend our apologies to you on behalf of the Christchurch Town Council for the inconvenience caused. However, it is in the interest of safety that these steps have been taken. Those of you without accommodation should go straight to our customer service desk at the airport where a council official will be waiting to take you to temporary shelters in the town. Those of you who are staying in Christchurch should go to your hotel and follow the instructions of staff there. It may yet be necessary to evacuate you down to the shelters as well. This decision will be made by hotel staff who are monitoring the situation very carefully. The storm has made a direct hit on the island. The storm I is expected to arrive in Christchurch at about 4 p.m., after which a brief period of calm will be experienced. The western wall of the storm will then hit at approximately 4.30, and the extreme winds and heavy rain should have improved by about 7 p.m. All roads will be reopened from 9 p.m. onwards. However, we're advising people to refrain from driving unless absolutely necessary, as conditions will be extremely hazardous with the risk of flooding everywhere. Flash flooding is a real danger for the valley towns of the south in particular, as mountain rivers and tributaries have already swelled to record levels. High winds have already caused massive power cuts in west coast towns and a string of major tornadoes have caused havoc across the Midlands. If at all possible, stay in Christchurch until tomorrow morning when the clean-up will begin. And, above all, stay safe. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You are going to listen to a conversation between a tutor and two students. In the first part of the discussion, they talk about a fellow student. First, look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen, answer the questions. Write no more than two words for each answer. Ah, Francis and Steve, hi. Now, before we start the tutorial, am I right in thinking that you haven't heard about Lorraine? No. What about her? Um, she's already left. What? 
Well, she hasn't told anyone. <sighs> you sound surprised. Uh, weren't you half expecting it? Yes, but she could at least have told us, though. We've been on the course together for the past three years, and it would have been nice to know. She always was the sort to keep herself to herself. Yes, I know what you mean. Did she give any reason? Well, she got that job. What? Yes, and she's been given permission to leave, as there's only a week to go before the end of the course. But she'll be back for the exam week. Oh, well, we'll just have to catch her on the mobile after the class. She's gone back to Wales first. Oh, dear. We'll get hold of her on the mobile. She did say that it might not be possible to contact her for a couple of weeks. Oh, OK. If that is what she wants. Before the conversation continues, look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen to the second part of the discussion. The tutor and the two students are talking about assessment marks. For questions 24 to 30, there are four alternatives. A, B, C and D. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. Right, to work. We're here to look at your assessment marks for your coursework. I take it you haven't seen them yet? No, <laughs> not yet. Well, you'll both be pleased. In fact, very pleased. Yes. Francis, you have come out with the top mark in the year. Oh. You have, in fact, got a starred first. Wow. Aren't you pleased, Francis? Yes, I'm just speechless. <laughs> And um, what about me? Well, Steve, you got a first as well. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> you might have done even better, but there were a few faults with the 5,000-word project you did on traffic management. And what about the book review we had to do? Yours was, I can safely say, the best we have ever had. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm not. In fact, you have won the departmental prize for the piece. It's a pity, really, that your project wasn't of the same calibre. It's still not bad at all, though, is it? It certainly isn't. What do you think were the faults with your project? Uh, I just wasn't very happy with the conclusion, and I got myself in a bit of a twist with the argument about road pricing. By and large, your overall conclusions were OK, and I would say that your thoughts on road pricing were quite original. The problem was more with the actual end. It was a bit disappointing. You started off well, but then it ended rather suddenly, as if you got fed up with it. <laughs> yes, I did kind of stop fairly abruptly. I couldn't think of much to say, even though I knew it was important. Yes, that section needed a bit more work on it. But, as I said, by and large, it was very good. And, Francis, mm -hmm. your project was excellent. So much so that we think you should take it further and perhaps do a PhD or at least an MPhil. What do you think? Um, <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it. I've just been concerned with getting through this final year and getting all the coursework and exams out of the way. I can understand that. But I do think that you ought to consider it seriously. If you perform as well in your exams as in your project work, you're on course for a first. Do you think that I'd get funding for it? Well, any grant will be discretionary, but you have as good a chance as anyone else. I'd even say a much better one. Mm. If you do get a first, it'll be the only one we've had in this department for three years. And I'd be happy to be your supervisor. Thanks. I'd like that. Do you think I should start applying for it now or wait until after the exams? I think you must really start thinking about it as soon as you can. Mm. And, Steve, 
What about you? Have you thought about going on to do research? I have thought about it, but I have a job lined up if I get a good degree. And quite honestly, I am fed up with not having enough money to do the things I would like to do. <laughs> I can understand that. Is there anything that either of you would like to talk about? Yeah. I have a couple of things I'd like to ask, if you don't mind. OK. We have roughly、uh, 20 minutes left. So, Steve, would you like to go first? Right.、Um... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk about security in the UK. Listen to the talk and complete the statements below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. In large cities, for instance London, and crowded places such as airports and stations, there is the risk of theft. We do not want you to suffer the distress of losing important documents and valuables as soon as you step onto British soil. So here are some important do's and don'ts. Don't carry more cash than you need for daily expenses. If you stay at a hotel, do ask the manager to keep large sums of cash, documents, and valuables in the hotel safe and give you a receipt for them. This is a free service. If cash is stolen, it is very unlikely to be recovered. Do keep separately a note of the serial numbers on your traveller's checks, so if they are lost, you can inform your bank. Do take particular care of bank and credit cards. Do carry wallets and purses in an inside pocket or a handbag. Don't ever leave a bag unattended, and make sure it is securely fastened when you are carrying it. Do carry jewellery and valuables such as cameras, radios, and typewriters on you or with you, and keep a note of any serial numbers. Do take special care of your passport, travel tickets, and other important documents. Documents are at risk, particularly at airports and stations. Where it is obvious that most people will be carrying them, do make a note and keep it in a safe place of the number of your passport, its date, and place of issue. This makes replacement easier if you are unlucky enough to lose it. If you don't want to carry heavy luggage around with you, you can leave it in a luggage office at most large stations and pick it up later. Keep the receipt so that you can reclaim your luggage. Check the opening hours, or you may find your luggage locked away when you need it again. If you lose any of your luggage in transit, take this up immediately with the officials of the airline or shipping line. But don't worry too much. Ninety-eight percent is found within three days. If you lose anything, go first to the lost property office at the airport or station, as it may have been found and handed in. If you lose your luggage in the street. Or suspect it has been stolen rather than gone astray. Find the nearest policeman who will advise you what to do. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.